This type of mushroom is called a bolet, or a sponge mushroom. And you can see the hymenium layer down here, the layer that produces the spores, which is what the mushroom is trying to do. Most people aren't aware of this, but this is not the body of the mushroom. The thallus of the mushroom is the mycelium, which can be hundreds, thousands of times greater in mass than the uh, mushroom itself. The mushroom one might think of as like an apple from a tree. When the mycelium is the rest of the tree that's hidden from view in the forest floor, getting its energy by decomposing leaves and all kinds of debris that falls off the trees. And a lot of mushrooms also into a symbiotic relationship with certain trees by providing them with some type of moisture control during dry weather. In return, the mushroom gets nutrients and other essential components that they need in order to produce this thing. All this is is a fruiting body. Now on the bolets, this layer right here, you can see can peel off. And what would be left here on the cap would be the edible part. Most bolets are edible, but not all of them. I'm not aware of any bolet sponge mushrooms that will kill you. At worst, they'll make you really, really sick. This is remarkable. We've been driving along. We're checking the road out to do uh, some spraying. And we've run across a whole bunch of uh, hynaces, which is a type of toothed fungus. This one looks like a little puffball. This stuff is absolutely delicious. It tastes uh, almost exactly like crab meat. There's two different species of it. It's also known as uh, boar's head because it gets relatively large. Kind of resembles coral a little bit. This stuff tastes uh, quite a bit like crab meat. It has a really nice mushroomy smell to it. Now these ones we've found growing on an old maple. It's an old maple tree. And you can see here's some more. When they start to turn yellow like this, they're just starting to go by, but I'll be able to trim this up. This will be really good eating tonight. We also have what's called a Pleurus oysterus, or oyster mushrooms. And uh, you can tell they're oyster mushrooms because they really don't have a stipe. They have a decurrent gill system here. I'm not a big fan of these. You trim off the base part of it. This type of fungus usually doesn't have too much of a problem with uh, bugs. And I think you can see right there there's another one. You'll get multiple flushes, sometimes up to three flushes on the same log. So if you came back uh, in a few weeks or after a solid rain, you'd probably get another, another harvest off from this. Really cool find we found a good specimen of Hypomyces lactiflorum and its common name is lobster mushroom. It's actually two funguses. Uh, an imperfect fungi, and then the uh, host fungus, which is Rushla betavips. And as you can see, it looks kind of nasty, but it tastes really good. Hypomyces lactiflorum. <laughs> Doesn't look very appetizing, does it? <laughs> we just ran across another one that had gone by. This one is still good. Let me see if we can find some, some more in here. Now the host mushroom, before this thing turned all orange, was a white mushroom that's known as a Rushula bedevin. Now, believe it or not, these are the same mushroom. Well, I, they're not identical to the same mushroom. This isn't a trick of quantum physics where they're in two places at the same time. It's the same species. The main difference being that the red mushroom over here has been infected, if you will, by an imperfect fungus, Hypomyces. This is a Rushula vetivips mushroom, which is also edible, but pretty nasty taste and pretty peppery. I'm not a big fan of that at all. Whereas this one right here tastes a lot like a fried potato with a hint of mushroom. Kind of like you took fried potatoes and you mixed in some truffles with them or something to give that mushroom flavor. Yeah, these are really good even though they look quite hideous.